I spent the the better part of a year, particularly in the summer of 2020, just just literally shaking my head, like what what is what is going on? <laughs> what is happening here? Nothing was making sense to me. Everything was anathema to what I understood to be good medical practices, uh, my understanding of public health practice. Everything was just uh, upside down. Having spoken to some of the guests we've had on this particular stream, I've come to understand. Here's what I understand. You correct me if any of this is wrong, and I'm very anxious to hear your experience on the inside of all this. It seemed like uh, people in the leadership, the bureaucracy of public health, bought into the idea that zero COVID and lockdown was not just a desirable policy, was the one and only policy as followed by the Chinese Communist Party. Somehow these Chinese colleagues convinced them of that fact and that lie. Uh, once committed to that, anything that was... Uh, suggesting that perhaps not the best policy was anathema and needed to be destroyed while we did everything possible to get to vaccine. So it was get to vaccine with as little damage as possible, maybe zero COVID we can attain in the meantime. And once at vaccine, it became vaccine uberalis. Vaccine is the one and only policy. It's everybody and anyone that uh, sort of in any way <laughs> brings up uh, issues around vaccine therapies at any age group, again, has to be destroyed. Uh, yes, Uber Alice, uh, uh, Caleb has to throw up there, means above everything else. So what was your experience? And help me refine uh, my understanding of what happened to us through all that. Well, once again, Dr. Drew, what a pleasure and an honor to you and for Dr. Victory for inviting me here. Look. The reality about it is, um, let's say February, March, when um, I was still doing some work for WHO and I got communication around April, early May to come to Washington as a senior pandemic advisor to the Trump administration. I'm speaking today as an independent, not Republican, not Democrat, as an academic scientist, because we have to, we have to come to the table to discuss the evidence to find out what went wrong so it does not happen again because a lot of things went wrong. CDC has told us this, Dr. Walensky. And the reality is that very early, maybe about by around the middle of April 2020, we were beginning to get data telling us, showing us from across the world even, that COVID was amenable to risk stratification in the sense that your baseline risk was prognostic on the severity of outcome and your death, etc. So we, we could have seen that there was a very steep age risk curve that basically even CDC's initial data was showing that 70 to 75 years old and below, if you were infected, the risk of survival was almost 100%. So we were questioning why the carte blanche lockdown. And uh, when people like Bhattacharya and Kuldoff and Gupta came out with their um, uh, Great Barrington, um, I was part of uh, pushing for it also with Dr. Scott Atlas on the inside. Because our argument was very simple. As long as you strongly and properly double down and triple down protect the vulnerable and the high risk in a society, that is the elderly in the nursing homes, the assisted living, your private home, and you use public service announcements, decent public service announcements, you know about vitamin D3, getting your body weight under control, things like that, you allow the rest of society the low risk healthy in the society to live largely normal lives with as unfettered disruption as possible. And we were standing on the shoulders of people like Dr. Donald Henderson from Johns Hopkins who eradicated smallpox. His seminal paper in 2006 said that. Uh, WHO itself had a guidance document in 2019 that's, that indicated that all of those COVID uh, policies, those lockdown policies, um, border restrictions, quarantines, etc. Those were low quality evidence and not as the go-to. Uh, the only thing that really emerged as something that should be considered in an epidemic or pandemic is you isolate or quarantine, consider strongly symptomatic unwell people, not asymptomatic people. So we, we had all of this information. We even had WHO guidance that the whole world First world countries contributed to, to develop, yet we did the complete opposite. We failed to protect the vulnerable in the old age homes, in the nursing homes, and we locked down the health in the society. And our argument has been always that you allow the well in society 
to live normal lives and naturally and harmlessly confront pathogen as they go about their lives and they will develop the natural immunity and get us the herd immunity. And that remains what I said in the beginning, what I was attacked on in the beginning, Scott Atlas was pilloried over. Yet today, if you sit back, that is exactly where the CDC has come to today after two years. So it's almost like we've indicated, but this is not a victory. This has been devastating, Dr. Drew, because, because I can tell you something. We had indications from inside of the government, inside the Trump administration. We had parents who were presenting to the emergency room doctors with their childs in their arms, telling the doctors, doctor, I've been locked down for about a year. I've, I've been beating my wife, physically abusing her. The wife is telling the doctor, I've been, I've been beating my husband. Today, today this, this morning, we beat the child. We think we broke their bone. We think the child is dead. Can you help us? We had multiple reports. So it was devastating what the school closures was doing. Devastating what the lockdowns did. We had multiple reports of business owners, people who were laid off, and children who committed suicide across America. And the news media was doing a very good job to not table that on the nightly news. Because at that point, the administration was fighting to open schools and fighting to open the economy. So the, the dictum in DC, I was there, was that if we table all these catastrophic suicides, et cetera, um, the administration will get some credit. So they just covered it up. I can tell you, many American children committed suicide, many. And so you're advocating an incredibly uh, aggressive and extraordinary policy of quarantining sick people. Where did that come from? Oh, wait a minute. That's what we've always done through human history, save one episode in Venice in the 12th century, which was a freaking disaster and has never been contemplated that we would do otherwise with quarantine. That's never been contemplated. It's always been you quarantine sick people. One quick question yes. and we'll bring Dr. Victor in here. I've, yes. I, I have sort of three questions. I have sort of a global question of what happened, given that we knew all that, but that's sort of aside. Let me ask a specific question. Why wasn't a risk reward analysis really considered in this decision making. It, feel, it feels as or it looked as though they forged on without risk reward contemplation at all. Particularly, what seemed to have been ignored to me were pertinent details like years of life lost. Let me just point out that the average duration of life after a male is admitted to a nursing home is six months on average that's the average life expectancy of a male sufficiently deteriorated to need institutional support six months so something was going to take that man six months or a year down yes. the road in any event these children we have lost these are decades and decades of years of life lost and impacted years of life through this mental health consequences of all this why weren't any of these risk reward notions seemingly even contemplated well, Dr. Drew, you ask a very important question, because, and I'll answer it this way, and the response is staggering. Up to today, we are near 2.5 years in. You cannot find across the CDC, the NIH, the NIAID, FDA, WHO in Geneva, SAGE in Britain. No one has conducted a risk-benefit, cost-benefit analysis of any of their policies. It's the most staggering thing. We have written about it. We've called for these cost-benefit analyses, exactly how you just said it. No one has done it because that you would have thought would have been the basic because you could then consider alternative courses of action and you would choose among the alternative that, that incurs the least harm and the most benefit. They just went on and on. They responded to persons like myself by hardening lockdowns. They pilloried Scott Atlas by extending the lockdowns, and then they turned around and smeared us. All we said was, look, the evidence is quickly accumulating within America, within Canada, within UK, across the world, that lockdowns... Dr. Drew, I know you want to bring Dr. Um, Victor in, but let me, let me say it to your listeners this way, so that they understand where we are today, because I, I really, really applaud you. This is a very important topic. I have looked at all of the evidence across the world, 
all of the science, and I've published this with Dr. Harvey Wish, Dr. Peter McCullough, et cetera, Dr. Howard Tannenbaum. We looked at all of the evidence and we put it in brownstone. We looked at all of the science on lockdowns. We could find not one instance across the entire world from the beginning of this pandemic to today in United States, in any state, in any location across the world mm -hmm. where any lockdown worked to curb transmission or reduce risk of death. We find not one indication where any school closure anywhere in the world for the last 2.5 years worked to curb transmission or reduce death. No mass mandate worked. We showed that in all our graphs, wherever you implemented a mass mandate, infections actually went up. No business closure worked to curb infection or death. Every single COVID policy, Dr. Drew, Everyone enacted by the CDC, NIH, etc., have failed. Failed. None have worked. That's where we are today. And the question becomes: if that has happened, if if this is the fact and this is the data, I challenge anyone listening to your show, any clinician, any scientist in any agency in America or across the world, bring me, bring us science, bring us any data to show us that any lockdown, school closure, mass mandate, business closure, all we did was we shifted the burden of morbidity and mortality from the affluent persons in society, the laptop Zoom class, we call them. We shifted it to the poor in society, the marginalized people, yes. women. Women suffered with the lockdowns. The poor, the minority children suffered. People yes, didn't know. Of but when you close schools, of course. most children in America get their only meal in that school lunch program in schools. And when we close schools, the middle managers in CDC and NIH and FDA and in the government didn't know that thousands, millions of American children starved, especially the poor children, because they had no food. When you close schools, children don't get their eyes tested, their hearing tested, and they get no food. There were catastrophic consequences from those COVID lock. I call them lunatic policies. In the Trump administration, and I work for the Trump administration, so your, your listeners must understand, I am hammering the Trump administration here and the Biden administration. So thank you very much, and over to Dr. Victory. We'll bring her in just a second. And I, I appreciate you because there's plenty of blame to go around, right? We're not, we're not playing yes. politics here. We're, we're trying to evaluate what happened. The CDC states that COVID-19 vaccines are safe, effective, and reduce the risks of COVID-19. Always consult with your personal physician before making any decision about your health.